USA Radio News with John Hunt. A British oil tanker was seized in the Strait of Hormuz by Iranian forces while another was temporarily stopped and sent on its way. Here's the words of British Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt. Stena Impro was seized in Omani waters in clear contravention of international law. This is totally and utterly unacceptable. It raises very serious questions about the security of British shipping and indeed international shipping. Iran's Revolutionary Guard claims that they seized the tanker for violating international regulations. Three members of a now-defunct white supremacist group were sentenced to more than two years in prison for punching, kicking, and choking counter-demonstrators at a white nationalist rally in Charlottesville and events in California. Benjamin Daly, Thomas Gillen, and Michael Miscellis were members of the group known as the Rise Above Movement, and the U.S. Attorney's Office sentenced them yesterday. This is USA Radio News. Someone in Mississippi may be slipping fentanyl into batches of heroin. USA Radio's Rick Vincent has more. A deadly batch of heroin may have killed as many as six people in Mississippi. Some officials say it may have included fentanyl. Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics Director John Dowdy says that mistake could easily be fatal. It doesn't take but one microgram of fentanyl to kill somebody. So if you have somebody that's uh, purchasing a gram of uh, fentanyl and ingesting you know, any part of that at one time, the chances of death are, are or uh, about 100%. American crocodiles, once headed toward extinction, are now thriving at an unusual spot, the canals surrounding a South Florida nuclear plant. Last week, 73 crocodile hatchlings were rescued by a team of specialists at Florida's Power and Light Turkey Point nuclear plant, and dozens more are expected to emerge soon. Turkey Point's 168 miles of man-made canal service home to several hundred crocodiles where a team of specialists work to protect them from hunting and climate change. This is USA Radio News. A confirmation vote is expected Tuesday for Mark Esper to become the next Secretary of Defense. John Clements reports. The 55-year-old Mark Esper, who has served as Secretary of the Army since November 2017, is expected to be approved by the full Senate. Earlier during the Senate Armed Services Committee hearing, Dr. Esper answered a key question about Iran in this exchange with Senator Jack Reed. We will meet anytime, anywhere, without precondition to discuss issues with the Iranians to get us on the diplomatic path. So you think that diplomatic path is, is the most uh, thoughtful way to proceed? Diplomacy always is. I'm John Clemens. Subaru has discovered a defect so severe that it's planning to buy back a number of legacy sedans and Outback SUVs that have already landed in owners' driveways. Faulty welds in the car could not only lead to an accident, according to the automaker, but increase the risk of injuries to vehicle occupants if one occurs. The plan is to recall and check out about 2,100 cars for the defect, of which 200 are expected to need repairs immediately. About 20 of those cars are in the hands of consumers, and the rest have yet to be delivered. The announcement is rare for Subaru, but not unique at a time when automotive recalls have been running at or near record levels. A year ago, Subaru had to make a similar move when it discovered welding defects on 243 of the then-new Ascent SUVs. Take us with you on your mobile device and listen anytime at usaradio.com. For USA Radio News, I'm John Hunt.